Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to make your favorite crochet hooks more beautiful and more ergonomic with polymer clay. So I am kind of transforming my regular Clover Amour crochet hooks. These are already somewhat ergonomic, but I have found that I really like the handle shape of the Furls Odyssey or even just the regular Furls crochet hooks because they're thicker around the middle and they're also scooted a little further back from the tip. I really like the feel of this handle shape and this is even more ergonomic, but these are also significantly more expensive. So I am going to go ahead and change my clover hooks by taking the rubber off of the handles and covering them in polymer clay. Now you can also do this with any other, um, like an aluminum or any other kind of metal crochet hook, as long as you take off any plastic or rubber that is apart or attached to it. So here are a couple of the hooks that I have already made. And these are actually not super difficult to make if you've never worked with polymer clay before. But there are a few things that you're going to need. And then there are also a few things that I have here that are optional. So obviously you're going to need a crochet hook to add the handle to. You're going to need some polymer clay. And I prefer Fimo mainly because it's easy to get at most craft stores and it's a lot more firm than Sculpey. Now this particular color, the turquoise, is softer than some of the other colors, but to me Sculpey is a little bit like overly soft. It's really, really soft. And while that's great for when you are trying to mush it in your hands, it doesn't hold its shape as well as a firmer clay. And there are even clays that are more firm than the Fimo. So this one is labeled as Fimo Professional, but I've also used some that are called Fimo Soft. It doesn't really matter which clay you choose. This is just my personal preference. I'm also kind of marbling in some traces of another color into all of my hooks. So if you want to do that, then you can get more than one color. This is a scrap from one of my other hooks. And if you want to know the exact colors of clay that I used for all of my clover hooks, you will find that information in the blog post, link in description box, that is on my blog. And that will give you kind of the color blends that I used on all of my hooks because I really like that the clover hooks are color coded. And so I was kind of going for matching not precisely matching, but kind of roughly matching the color of the new handles to the colors of the old handles. So you'll also need an X-Acto knife, preferably kind of an old one that you don't really need to, you know, keep it super clean because this is going to get kind of dirty. You're going to need some Bacon Bond, Sculpey Bacon Bond, and this is an adhesive that bakes in the, in the oven when you bake your clay and it hardens and solidifies and, and binds things together when it is baked. You're also going to need a couple of tools. You don't need all of these, but I have a knitting needle here. This is a knitting needle that I keep with my clay tools and I do not use it for knitting anymore. And you want to kind of keep that in mind because this is not like a natural clay. This is not a clay that comes out of the ground that's made of wet dirt. This is kind of a form of plastic and when it bakes it becomes a type of plastic. So it is essentially made of chemicals. So you do want to be careful and keep that in mind when you use this stuff because you don't want to contaminate things that you would use with other, you know, other tasks with the clay. So for example, if you wanted to use a kitchen utensil or a, a kitchen tool with your clay, you would need to separate that tool out and not take it back to the kitchen. Even if you wash it, there can still be residues of the chemicals from the clay on that tool. So likewise, I have a, like a silicone placemat. It's real thin, but you can use a plastic bag or something. 
and I'm laying that down underneath my clay as I'm working. And I'm also working on a surface that can be cleaned easily, a tabletop that can be cleaned easily. So I also have a couple of extra tools. I have these little silicone tipped tools. I have a roundish one and then a flat straight one. And I am using these to mark the letter sizes of the hooks on to the ends of the handles. These are not required, but I really like these. And then I have a tool with kind of a smaller needle shape on it. This is not required either. And the other end, what's on the other end, you don't need that at all. But I like a kind of smaller um, needle tool as well. I have a ruler. I think that is kind of an important thing because I like to measure out how far down the hook everything goes. And you'll also need a scrap of cotton batting. It has to be cotton batting because this is going to go into the oven with your clay and an old pot holder. Now, you definitely want an old pot holder because like I said, you don't want to be taking things you've used with clay back to the kitchen or back to another task. Even if you wash them, the residues will not always come out. So this is just an old one that we don't use in the kitchen anymore. Now there are also some other things I have here that are not required but recommended as far as if you're going for the same type that uh, of hooks that I am making. I have added some extra fine glitter to my hooks. I really like this because it's sparkly and I like sparkly. But also because this helps camouflage any bits of dust that get in your clay as you're working with it. I've got some metal wire here and this is just because on most of my hooks, if not all of them, I've made the clay come past the end of the metal hook inside. So I've just stuck a couple pieces, short pieces of wire down into the end to kind of get a little bit more structure maybe. That's just my per personal preference as well. You don't have to do that either. And I've, so I've also got some wire cutter pliers to cut the wire. But if you're not using the wire, don't worry about it. I've also got some triple thick brush on gloss glaze and this is something we're going to use when we're done with the hook to give it like a glossy shiny finish. And I also have these finger gloves. Now these are not required either, but I really like these because they are kind of customizable to fit your hands and they only cover like your fingers. So if I need to touch the clay with my hand, then I still have, you know, parts of my hand exposed that can use that, the texture of your skin, because sometimes that helps to blend things. But I like these because I don't get the clay smeared into my skin. So because I'm not touching the clay as much, I'm not absorbing as much of the chemicals, because that can happen, skin is porous. And also these keep the clay from getting stuck in your fingernails. So that's a plus for me. I really like to use these when I'm working with clay. So I have kind of made my hooks in all different styles. You'll see that in the photos, but I'm going to show you just one style that I'm going to do on this one. And you can kind of look at my other pictures for reference of what other types of styles you might like to make. Now, one more thing I should mention before we get started making the hook is that when you go to bake your clay, as I said, this stuff becomes a form of plastic when you bake it. And so it gives off chemicals when it is heated. And so it is recommended that you do not bake clay in an oven that you would bake food in. So if at all possible, it's best not to bake the clay in your kitchen oven. So what I recommend is you know, you could go to the craft store and spend like $65 on a clay and craft oven, which is essentially a toaster oven in a different box. Or you can do what I did and you can go to a thrift shop or a yard sale and buy a used toaster oven. It doesn't have to look pretty, it just needs to work. And when I say it needs to work, I mean the temperature control needs to work as well because, you know, usually like thrift shops, turn things on to make sure that they work in the sense that it gets hot, but it needs to do more than get hot. It needs to have the adjustable temperature actually working 
so that it is not going to burn your clay. So for about $2, I got a toaster oven that I can use just for clay, and those chemicals will only get on the inside of that oven and not on the inside of my kitchen oven. And also, I like to set up my toaster oven outside of the living space, like if you have a patio or a garage or a porch or wherever, because then you're also, there's no chance of, of breathing any chemicals while it's baking if your toaster oven is set up outside. So let's get started with the hook itself. The first thing we're going to do is turn the hook over. Now if you're using like a Boy or a Susan Bates hook, you will not need to do this because those generally do not have rubber handles on them, although some of them do. So if you have one with a rubber handle, we're going to cut it off. So take your X-Acto knife, and this will take a couple of passes, but you want to start just at the very top and try to slit that very top edge without making a big scratch in the metal above the edge of the rubber. So I got a slit started there. And I just wanted to kind of keep it going. This takes a little bit of doing to get it off, but we're just going to be kind of slicing it open down the back. All right, so that sounded and felt like it was almost totally off. So I'm just going to kind of pry it off the rest of the way. And this is what the hook looks like on the inside. So this is a size seven, four and a half millimeter hook. So I'm going to save the handle so that I know what size it is and I can mark it on the end of the hook. So here's our hook. You can see that it does have a little bit of a scratch line where we cut the rubber part off, but that's okay because that's going to be entirely covered with clay. Speaking of the clay, this is a two ounce block of clay and one of these hooks takes approximately one ounce. So this is divided up into eight kind of strip sections or eight strips. And what we need is four strips for one hook. So what I'm going to do is take kind of three and three quarter strips of the blue and then take the equivalent of that extra quarter strip of this reddish pinkish blend that I used for my other hook, one of my other hooks. So I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and slice through the clay. And on this fourth strip, I'm kind of gonna mark, there's my three quarters. And I'm just going to slice all the way through over here and over here and then through that strip. And it's just kind of an approximation, but there's three strips plus three quarters of a strip. And then I'm going to make the rest of that quarter of a strip by just going like that and slicing off the extra of my extra color that I'm going to kind of marble in. Any leftover clay should be stored in either an airtight container or like a Ziploc bag so that it doesn't dry out and get hard. Now we're gonna kind of marble this together and when I marble clay, I kind of like a real thin uh, marbling, like real thin streaks of the extra color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my extra color and kind of smush it down a little bit. I'm gonna put on my little finger gloves. And this is not really any type of difficult thing to do. We're just going to be making little ropes of clay. So I'm going to take this reddish section and I'm going to roll it out into a thin rope. Kind of like that. And I should mention that if you don't want to marble your clay and you just want to use a solid color, go for it. So you won't have to do this, sec this part, this step. Now I'm going to take another section off of my main color and do the same thing. And I'm just going to make this blue into several ropes. All right, 
So now I'm going to take these ropes and kind of make them into one rope. So I'm just going to kind of smush them together, make them into a rope, and then I'm just going to kind of just press them together. Because if you don't press them together first, then sometimes they can start to separate and shred a little bit when you roll them out. All right. So I've got one long rope with a little strip of the red in it. And I'm going to cut this into several sections. And what I'm going to do is take each of these sections and roll them out even thinner. And give them quite a bit of twist. So I'm just going to twist these kind of like a candy cane. You know, so you get swirling stripes all the way down and set them aside. And then I'm going to do that with all the rest of them. All right, so now I'm going to put those twisted ropes together, kind of smush them together into a rope again. And then just squeeze them a little bit so that they're all stuck to each other. And then I'm going to cut them in sections again. So I generally do like fourths, but doesn't really matter. So now I'm going to take these and roll each one out individually like we did before and twist them again. And as you can see each time we roll them out again and start twisting them again, the little red lines get even thinner. All right, so now I'm just going to put these together into a rope. Again, smush them together a little bit, cut them in sections, roll them out, twist them, and put them back together again, just like we already did. All right, so now I'm just going to kind of put them together one more time into a single rope like that, roll it out a little bit more, and give it one final twist. And you can see that color is kind of blending in, but it's still just got real, real thin, faint lines in it. And now what I'm going to do is take this and kind of smush it together in a ball. And what I'm going to do is kind of roll it between my hands once it's kind of smushed together and make it round. So now if there are any remaining seams, I'm just going to kind of smush them together. If you need to, you can kind of use your fingertip to just kind of rub it in and that will help blend any seams. So now what we're going to do is start making the shape of our handle. So I kind of like a teardrop shaped handle, kind of like the furls. So I'm going to roll it out on my mat, putting more pressure on the ends like that. And this is just kind of a rough shape anyway. So don't worry about it being too perfect at this stage. So now I'm going to cut off a little section at the bottom and that will be for any decorations I might choose to add or just scrap left over and then I'm going to kind of finalize my little shape here flatten the ends a little bit and then what we're gonna do is take our exacto knife and we are going to split this almost in half all the way through, but we want to kind of come 
down the middle, but not go all the way through to cut it in two separate pieces. We just want to make a big, relatively deep slit to insert our crochet hook. And that wasn't quite deep enough, so I'm going to take it a little deeper, like that. And we're going to kind of open it up a little bit. And then we're going to take our hook and we're going to decide where we want the clay to stop. So I have determined that I want my clay to stop one and a half inches from the hook tip, which is just a tad bit past this little flat section on this particular hook. If your hook is kind of have a, a longer spot before the flat section, then you can, you know, make the hook start further down if you want as far as the handle. So I'm going to take the bacon bond and apply this to pretty much the entire surface of the hook that's going to get covered with clay. But I don't, I want to, I want to like stop the bacon bond just shy of where the clay is coming to because sometimes a little tiny bit of it will squeeze out. And you just want kind of a thin coat here. You don't want it to be covered like really thick with the bacon bond. You just want enough to kind of roughly coat the surface. All right, so now we're going to stick this into the clay. So I like to start at kind of the top end of the crochet hook, open it up a little bit more, and I'm just going to kind of insert that into the slot. And then press it in, and then we're going to just kind of squeeze the clay around it. And if it looks kind of wonky at this point, that's okay. So you can dab off any extra glue with a paper towel. And what I'm going to do is just kind of start squeezing this together. And that will help begin to deal with that seam right there where we slice the clay open and then put it back together. And then I'm going to kind of use my finger that doesn't have a glove on it and just use the friction and the heat of my hand to blend that seam. And once your seam is just about totally blended, then we're going to start kind of working on the shape of the handle. So what we want to do is I kind of like mine to be a little bit thinner at the top. You want to press it against the hook at the top and make sure it's right up against there. And I'm going to measure this against my ruler to make sure that it stops at the point I want it to. So what I'm going to do is take this shorter needle tool and just press the edges of the clay down. At the top, it kind of evens it out. and creates that straight line that we're going for. I kind of like a straight cutoff point right here at the top. Makes it look a little bit more professional in my opinion. So I'm just going to give that a little bit more of a gentle squeeze. And we're going to start kind of squeezing this together and smoothing out the shape of our handle at this point. So you want to just kind of keep turning it as you go and gently pressing on any areas that are kind of bubbling up a little bit and make them even 
with the rest of the hook. And again, this is just kind of a rough smoothing out at this point. This is not the final shape. You could stop here and bake it at this point if you want just this shape right here. So what I'm going to do is kind of wiggle the end a little bit and get a feel for where the end of my hook is falling inside there. And it kind of feels like it stops about right here. So then I know how, um, how, how long it is compared to the handle. Now another thing I want to measure is where the thickest point of the hook handle falls. So on the furls, the thickest point of the handle falls about three and a half inches away from the hook tip. So I am going to lay this down next to my ruler and I'm going to decide where I want that thickest point to be, which is about right here. So I'm going to, first of all, make sure that my clay stops at one and a half inches from the hook tip. And then I want to kind of get an idea for where I want that thickest part to be. So I'm going to start gently squeezing up from, if I'm holding the hook tip in my other hand, just kind of gently pressing the clay in an upward direction or towards where I want that thickest point to be. So now when I lay this down again, I can see that that thickest section is at the three and a half inch mark where I want it to be. And this is still, again, a rough shape here because I'm gonna add some more detailing to this. And you can add the detailing at any place on the hook that you like. I kind of tend to vary mine between hooks. I've done every single one of them differently. So I'm going to do, I think, kind of a little bubble shape, a real narrow bubble shape right about here-ish. And I'm gonna take my knitting needle and just gently press a little groove evenly around the hook in that spot. Like so, and then I'm gonna go back and make it a little bit deeper. And then I like to come in with my little narrow needle tool and make it even deeper and sharper of a groove. And then I'm going to go ahead and press down on the kind of rounded edges of that top side, like so. And when I say press down, I mean press away from the groove that we just made to kind of make it more rounded. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side because this shape is going to get kind of moved a little bit as we make the next groove. So I just wanna make sure it's even all the way around. And then I'm gonna make another groove kind of close to it. And again, you just wanna make sure it's even. Press a little mark in and make it deeper. I'm gonna come in with my other needle tool and do it again. And then I just wanna adjust the first groove a little bit because it got bent out of shape just a little bit. So now I'm going to kind of round the sides of that second edge or the second groove that we made on both sides just kind of pressing away from that groove so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the one in the center and i just want to kind of gently nudge it 
into place so that it is centered and you know the same in like in a straight line all the way around now I'm going to take from this top end and kind of gently squeeze kind of above that place where that groove was and it'll kind of push the clay down into almost like a teardrop shape up against that little bubble right there and then I'm going to do the same thing on this end I'm going to give it just a little bit of a squeeze right around there to press it up against that bubbled shape and I also want to make kind of a little bit of an indent right beneath that like so and now here is our thickest section I want to make sure that it is still in the place that I want it and it is because sometimes they get shifted around a little bit when you add the detailing so I'm just going to smooth that out make sure it's even and then I'm going to add another line down here towards the bottom or another groove so I'm going to again make a mark all the way around with my knitting needle And then I'm going to kind of round the edges of each of those sides by pressing away from the grooved part. I also kind of want to readjust my thick spot in the middle and make sure that it is still where I want it to be. Then I'm going to round the other side. And then we're again going to do that same little squeezing trick to bring them back together. Like that. Make sure my center section is still kind of even. And then I can squeeze on this little end down here and I want it to kind of taper down at the end so there is kind of my rough shape it's a little bit more refined now and detailed and so I'm going to go ahead and take my little needle tool and just kind of smooth out any places that I don't like in that groove in between the two. And then I just want to kind of straighten out the end a little bit and flatten it like so. And now we're going to add any extra detailing that we might want. And you might also want to, while you're doing this, hold it in your hand and see how you like the feel of the handle at this point because you can still change anything you don't like here. So now I'm going to take a little section of my extra clay and I'm going to kind of make it into a little ball and flatten it out by pressing it down on my surface, my work surface. And this little disc shape is going to become my end with the letter on it for the letter size now this one doesn't have a letter because this one is a seven 
which has no letter. It's like in between a G and an H. So I'm just going to mark it with a seven and I'm going to use my little rubber tipped clay tools. This one is the straight one. I'm gonna set it down on my surface and I'm going to just make some kind of deep indents with this tool. Like so. You do want them kind of deep because you don't want them to kind of lose their visibility as you work with the clay a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is kind of gently lift this up off of my mat. We want to make sure that that is not only visible but that the grooves are deep enough. Like so. So this is going to be our size marker. We're gonna stick it on the end of the hook. So before I do that, I am going to add a little bit of glitter to the hook. Actually, a lot of glitter. I like a lot of glitter. And on some of my hooks, I've done this before I put the detailing on. You can do it either way. What I'm gonna do is take the glitter and I'm gonna turn it to the, like, the little shaker opening and shake some out on my mat. And then I'm going to gently roll the hook in the glitter. And this helps the glitter get kind of pressed into the clay, especially if it's a softer clay, it'll stick to the glitter better. But it won't stick to every part of it. So what we're gonna do is take the glitter on our fingers and just kind of pat it onto the clay. And this helps you get it in all the little places that rolling it will miss. All right, so I've got my hook covered in glitter and you just wanna make sure you have an even coating. It doesn't have to be super precise. Then I'm just going to go one more time up here around with my needle tool, straighten out that top edge and then I'm going to glitter my size marker down here. So I'm just going to put a little more glitter on the table or on the mat and press the, the number or letter side into the glitter. You don't wanna press the back side because that's the side we're gonna glue. So you won't be able to see that anyway. And I'm also going to roll it in the glitter around the edges. Like so. So I'm just going to give it one more gentle press on the table or on the mat. And again, because my hook extends past the actual metal part inside, I like to take some wire, just like little half inch or five eighths inch pieces of wire. And again, this is optional. You don't have to do it this way. And I am going to kind of insert these one on each side of the end of the handle. You wanna make sure that you miss the actual metal part that's in there and don't bump into it. And then I'm just going to give the end of the hook one more little squeeze and just tap it on the table to make those little wire ends hide in the clay. I'm gonna add my bacon bond to the end now and add my little letter marker or number marker in this case. Just kind of gently press it on there like so. Press it on the table a little bit. And this hook is basically done as far as the sculpting part. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to bake this. So normally, you would say in a tutorial like this, you would say bake it according to the package directions. However, I don't exactly bake my clay according to the package directions. I do bake it on a piece of cotton batting. So I'm gonna lay it on top of the batting and then lay it into my toaster oven. 
but I do not bake it according to the package directions and I'll tell you why. Because the package directions tell you to bake it at what would be considered for food a low heat, but for clay it's a little bit of a higher heat in my opinion. And what can happen is if you're not real careful and you're not watching it, then the clay can get scorched and burnt, or it can get baked on the outside and not baked on the inside. So this one says, do not heat above 265 degrees. And it says on the front that you would bake it at 230 degrees for 30 minutes. That's an approximation as far as the 30 minutes but I like to bake my clay on a lower temperature than what the package says because I feel like I get a more thorough bake. It bakes it all the way through and it's, I, I know it's hard all the way through. So I bake it at a lower temperature for a longer time and it'll be totally baked through and yet it will also not be able to scorch or burn because it won't get hot enough to scorch or burn. It'll still get hot enough to bake it through if you leave it in there long enough, but it will not burn. So this is why I said your toaster oven needs to have an adjustable temperature on it. So my toaster oven says that that lowest setting is 200 degrees and I like to bake each hook for at least 45 minutes if not an hour and the nice thing about it is if you're baking it at that low low temperature if you forget about it and leave it in the oven longer than what it's supposed to be it won't hurt anything it will not burn and it won't harm your work so i'm going to go ahead and bake this one and the other one that i already did that is still unbaked i'm going to bake these both in my toaster oven at 200 degrees approximately for about an hour. All right, so these hooks are now baked. They are totally hard. They do end up getting a little bit stuck to the batting, but it's pretty easy to just take your fingers and rub off the little batting fuzz that is on the, the baked clay. So now what we're gonna do is you can see, obviously these are sparkly because they have glitter on them and they feel relatively smooth, but not quite smooth enough for my taste because the glitter, even though most of the glitter is pressed down into the clay before it was baked, there is still a little bit of texture to it and we don't want the glitter flaking off. So we are going to coat these in gloss glaze and that is just my finish of choice because I, I like that extra shiny finish on top of the glitter that's already there. And so what I like to use to help make this step a lot easier is I've been using this piece of styrofoam. Now this is like, this is not the little kind of powdery styrofoam that's made of little ball shaped things. This is like a, a spongy foam type styrofoam and this is great for poking the hooks down into when you're ready to put the glaze on them and as you can see these are already done they have that extra shiny finish to them and they just have a smooth glossy feel in the hand so I'm going to take these hooks out of the styrofoam because these are already finished and they've had two coats of gloss glaze and they're dry. So now I'm just going to put the unglazed ones down into the styrofoam and put the gloss glaze on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just poke these down into the holes that I made in the styrofoam by just punching the hooks down into it. And I'm just going to take this triple thick brush on gloss glaze and apply it with a smallish paintbrush, nothing fancy, just a little cheapy, smaller paintbrush. And I'm just going to kind of go over it with what might seem like a kind of thicker coat, but you don't want to do it too thin because the more you keep brushing over the same area of the glaze that you've already applied, 
that it can kind of get a little bit clumpy. So you're not really supposed to disturb it once you've just briefly brushed it on. So I just like to take big globs and just kind of gently smooth them in so that there aren't any, you know, large drips or anything like that. You just want a uh, smooth, even coating without messing with the glaze you've already put down in previously brushed over areas. So like now that I've covered this little section right here, I won't go over that again. So I can either turn the styrofoam or I can turn the hook by going like this at the bottom and coat all the way around, basically on the entire clay part. And by the way, this pink one right here has a little bow on it and a little, um, like a little rope around one of the details. So if you wanna see how I did that, you can see that in the photo tutorial in the blog post by clicking the link in the description box below. All right, so that one is completely glazed and I'm just going to glaze the second one. All right, so once this first coat of glaze is finished drying, I will apply a second coat and then once that has dried the glaze is supposed to, to cure for about 24 hours and then i will have a complete finished set of clover amour crochet hooks that have been covered in my polymer clay handles and i mentioned that i was doing this to try to get a thicker handle more ergonomic shaped kind of like the furls without spending that kind of money because those are rather expensive hooks. So because I already had all of the actual tools that I needed for this, most of them are, are pretty inexpensive. Like the toaster oven, like I said, you can get that at a yard sale or a thrift store. A knitting needle is not that expensive and chances are if you're a yarn crafter, you might already have one. And like an X-Acto knife, those are, are relatively inexpensive if you don't already have one. So as far as stuff that I actually had to purchase um, in supplies that would get used up, these came out for me to approximately roughly $4 per hook to add these handles. Now, when I say that, that is for this particular set that I made. That does not, you know, include the time that I put into it, but as far as supplies go, for my set, it was $4 per hook. Now that could change, it could be less if you put a, you know, one color on all your hooks, which I did not. So because I did all my hooks a different color, I bought a separate color block of clay for each hook, but I only used about half of most of the blocks. So if you did them all in one color, you could do 10 hooks with five two ounce blocks of clay, and that would cut the cost down a little bit more. Plus the glitter, this I think was $2.99, and this is barely even used up. There's, it's still full up to here. So even though it was $2.99, I've still got almost the entire bottle left of glitter that I can use for other things. So this entire bottle was not used up for the hooks, but I'm still including the entire the, the price of the entire bottle in my estimate of how much this cost me. Also, the bacon bond. This was something that I did not already have. I really liked working with this though. So I had to buy this. And depending on where you get it, this will vary in price. I got mine on Amazon. And as far as the gloss glaze, this will also vary greatly in price depending on where you get it. They have little bottles that are about this size, but I got the eight ounce jar because it was cheaper per ounce. But again, I barely even used any of this because this is an eight ounce bottle and I only glazed 10 hooks. So I still, because I had to buy this to do this project, I still divided the cost of the glaze between all of the hooks. And I should also mention that when I bought my clay, I did buy it on sale. 
at Hobby Lobby for 30% off. So I did not pay full price for my clay and I don't recommend that you do either because most craft stores have it on sale every now and then. So get your clay on sale. If your craft store does coupons, which most do, get your gloss glaze and your bacon bond with a coupon. You can even get your glitter with a coupon if you have enough coupons. So that can help cut the cost down per hook. But still, for me, roughly $4 per hook is relatively inexpensive compared to the price of getting a whole bunch of the furls hooks just for their shape and feel. And I already liked the shape of the clover hooks as far as the hook part and the surface of the metal on those hooks. So if you already have a set of crochet hooks that you like, you like the feel, you like the tip, you just don't like the handle, then if it doesn't have like a, an ergonomic handle on it, you can just add the clay to it with the bacon bond. Or if it has a rubber handle on it already, you can do what I did and just kind of slice it off with your X-Acto knife and replace the handles with something even more beautiful and even more ergonomic. So if you want more details on how I did these little bows that go around some of the hooks and the little rope details that go around some of the hooks, then you will find that in the photo tutorial on my blog, link in the description box, and on that page you will also find information on exactly which colors I blended together and in how much to get these exact colors. And now they are still kind of marbled a little bit, but I was just kind of going for matching the original colors of the clover handles. And they are pretty close. Not all of them are precise, but they are pretty close to the same colors. So I can continue to use those same colors that my brain is used to going, oh, the G is purple, and then I will always be able to remember which one's which, even though they are marked on the bottom of the handle. So just make sure if you want more information on this or you want to see which blends of clay I used, go check the link in the description box for the full blog post with the photo tutorial. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you have ever modified your crochet hooks in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.